uh, the revenue from the oil industries is not very great because in Egypt we do have a critical problem in the oil industry. Our oil is not like يعني, the Saudi Arabia oil or the Qatar oil. Our oil uh, have uh, large sulfur content. So uh, it, need to, it needs to be processed, uh, heavy processed. And also uh, we don't have a capacity or a good capacity to process the oil we, we make. Uh, we extract from the earth. We need to process the oil to remove the sulfur and uh, to refine it. We need to have a large refineries to refine the oil to make the airplane fuel and the car fuel. We don't have a large capacity. So Egypt exports export of oil is around 10 billion US dollar and import the same amount. Welcome to the Chemical Engineering Guys podcast a show in which we share stories and tips from chemical and process engineers. We talk about student and professional life, as well as important aspects of products, processes, industries, and companies. But more importantly, what are the paths that these unique individuals are taking in this ever-changing world? Let's get started. What's up, guys? Welcome once again to this episode on the Chemical Engineering Guys show. This time I have Mohamed Soror, which is a Egyptian student in the Chemical Engineering Bachelor. And I think it's better that Mohamed himself introduces. Mohamed, can you let us know a little bit on what are you doing right now and a little bit on why did you decide to study chemical engineering? Um, hello, guys. My name is Mohamed Faisal Soror. Uh, I am a 21 years old student. I'm studying chemical engineering uh, in Egypt. It is the academy called Egyptian Academy for Engineering and Advanced Technology. Um, in this academy, we have a five years program. We uh, we study uh, we study chemical engineering. We study petroleum and we study fluid mechanics and thermodynamics and all the engineering subject. Uh, I choose to pursue the chemical engineering uh, discipline because uh, I didn't like the mechanical or like the electrical. And I found the chemical engineering is an interesting field. It is not, uh, it is not uh, you know, a chemical. We don't, we don't use a chemical subject. We don't memorize equation. And we don't, it is not a pure chemical. It is engineering mixed with chemical. So it is very nice to study and very nice to understand. That's true, Mohamed. I think that many of our young students in high school may think that chemical engineering is a lot of chemistry, but in reality, yes. it's much more about process engineering and, of course, knowing what type of substances are being produced, a little bit on reactions, kinetics you may found, but yes. mostly is on the actual things that engineers work in chemical industries. Yes, not chemical, not, not pure chemical. Exactly. And Mohamed, let us know more on why did you decide it? I know that maybe mechanical and electrical engineering was not a great fit for you, but why engineering overall? Why not going for a chemistry uh, degree or maybe a, a mathematician or a doctor? Why did you decide chemical engineering? Uh, actually, um, it, depends on, it depends also on my country, okay? Uh, a doctor in Egypt would have a salary of uh, 1,050 Egyptian pound. That's equivalent to uh, $100 per month, okay? So it's not that nice. Yes, not that nice, okay? And the doctor will yeah, he will have to work at 12 hours in a hospital. Uh, and we in Egypt, our secondary school is uh, is called Sanawaya Amma. In this Sanawaya Amma or secondary school, you have to get 99% out of 100% to admit to medical college. It's so hard, you know. And why do people, if if it's very badly paid, why do people want to go there? Uh, because uh, in the medical, medical department and the pharmaceutical department, the government is... Um, uh, the, gov the government have to employ the, the student when they graduate. The, the government will employ it. It is a guaranteed thing. Oh, okay. Nice. And why did you decide chemical engineering and not petroleum engineering, maybe? Uh, petroleum engineering, uh, it, is, uh, it is a discipline. When you study it, you will only become a petroleum engineer. You don't have any other interest or any other opportunities to any field. But in chemical engineering, you can work as petroleum, you can work as environmental engineering, you can work as safety 
you can work as process engineering, but petroleum is only specific to petroleum companies. That's very important to remark, Mohamed, that you stated. The problem, well, not the problem, because of course, when you study petroleum engineering, you are set for oil and gas industry, most likely. And when you study for chemical engineering, you have yeah, a little broad, bit. Broad, 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 exactly. Yes. Like you can go in pharma, you can go in biotech, you can go process engineering, you can go for bulk chemical production, yes. you can study fine chemicals. So there's a, a lot of things that you can do. While yeah. being a petroleum ref, uh, engineer, you can only work in the refinery or gas treatment or units. Drilling. So like drilling, exactly. Offshore, onshore, etc. So, Mohamed, let us know more on how the curriculum is structured right now. You said five years. So, what do you do in those five years uh, as chemical engineer bachelor? Um, uh, because we, are, we do have yani, uh, a poor education in Egypt, okay? Uh, so, our secondary school, we should uh, have a very good uh, math and physics, okay? But uh, that isn't the case. But when I want to be engineering, I should have very good calculus skills and uh, integration and the differentiation and the physics. So uh, in Egypt, we do the, the first year. It is uh, it's called the primary year in in, uh, in the five years of engineering. The first year is called the primary year. Uh, that uh, the college will uh, address the calculus problem and the math problem and the physical problem and the broad uh, and the broad understanding of engineering and the broad understanding of uh, uh, communication skills and the English language because in Egypt uh, Arabic language is the first language. This is okay. this general level. Okay. We also study uh, introduction to computer and production engineering. Okay, and we study. Um, um drawing engineering drawing okay yeah i get it so mohammed why the institution that you are right now and not other university why going to the egyptian academy for engineering and advanced technology actually uh, in egypt um, the number one university in egypt is uh, cairo university it is a very popular university But uh, in the secondary school uh, grade, it takes from 96% or 95% from 100%. So it is a very hard to, to get, okay? And also, you know, they have a limited, uh, limited uh, yani number of uh, students that can admit each year. Uh, the good academy, the, uh, the Cairo University is a very good uh, university. It is the number one in Egypt. The second is the American University in Cairo. Uh, but uh, the tuition fees are, are very expensive. Are very expensive. You you shall admit like twelve uh, thousand dollar per month uh, per year to admit to AUC American University in Cairo. The average salary in Egypt is five thousand dollar per year, and the university require twelve thousand dollar per year. No, okay. that's too much. Yes, this is too much. Um, and we do also have a private university. Private university, some of private university are good, but most are bad, okay? Uh, because yeah, uh, in private university, you yeah, you purchase the degree for money, okay? You, didn't, you don't learn anything only. They respect you because you pay money, but they didn't teach you anything, anything okay? So private university, mostly it is not good, that good. Uh, then we found out that uh, the military production minister uh, has uh, yeah, has pub uh, has pub yani has publicated or published published that we, they will open a new a new university. This university um, will teach engineering because uh, the the military production factories needs an engineer. Uh, in Egypt, one of largest employee employer in Egypt is the military production factories. These factories uh, are 20 or 24, like 24 factory. Uh, factory, um, uh, they uh, make tanks, okay? They have a special uh, agreement with the United States government. They make uh, M1A1 tank, uh, and they uh, make uh, airplane, airplane, a uh, uh, fighter, fighter airplane, okay? They can, uh, yeah, uh, uh, fighter airplane, and they make uh, the training airplane, Bordeaux. Uh, also, uh, and they make uh, some uh, weapon and ammo, and they make also uh, a civil production, civil production like um, refrigerators and um, and the gas heater. Yani they, they also use 
سيفل سيفل برودكشن اوكي سو ات از ا فيري لارج مينستر ان ايجيبت ميلتري برودكشن اند اند ذي استابلش ذيس اكاديمي اند ذي سيد اند ذي سيد ذات ذيس اكاديمي ويل بي افليتيتد تو اس سو وي ويل تيك ا جود كير اوف ذا ستودنت اند وي ويل تيك ا جود كير اوف ذا كيوركلم اند ذا تيتشر ذا تيتشر ويل بي ا جود فيري جود تيتشر Uh, and uh, the education process will be uh, good and fair. Yeah. Okay, that's great to hear. Actually, I've heard about uh, military schools. Actually, here in Mexico, we have also many engineering schools for the military, or actually not for the military, but you can get a military career if you want, or you can go and use your degree in the civil life, let's say to private companies or so. So that's interesting to hear that you have a chemical engineering degree in the institution there i think it's always important to try to open more opportunities of quality for young engineers that want to become let's say professional engineers yes okay mohammed can you let us know more on what do you think uh, on the oil industry right now oil and gas on egypt and maybe middle east and a little bit on the globe so how are you right now situated um okay we will t- first speak in egypt okay and then i will uh, t- uh, talk about our neighbors the gulf countries okay, okay. Uh, in egypt uh, the oil industry yani, it is not very yani, productive okay the oil not the gas okay the oil industry uh, the revenue from the oil industries is not very great because in egypt we do have a critical problem in the oil industry our oil is not like yani, the saudi arabia oil or the qatar oil Our oil uh, have uh, large sulfur content, okay? So uh, it need to it needs to be processed, uh, heavy processed, and also uh, we don't have a capacity or a good capacity to process the oil we we make. Uh, we extract from the earth. We need to process the oil to remove the sulfur and uh, to refine it. We need to have a large refineries to refine the oil, to make the airplane fuel and the car fuel. We don't have a large capacity, okay? So Egypt exports export of oil is around 10 billion US dollar and import the same amount because they export some material or some uh, substance and they import uh, some other substance that they don't have the capacity of, to refine it, okay? We export raw oil, not, yani, not uh, refined oil. So this okay. one problem in Egypt, yeah. Uh, we expect a large uh, investment, a larger investment in the oil field uh, because some oil wells are being discovered in uh, Western Sahara uh, in Egypt uh, and in the Gulf of Suez. The, yeah, the little channel between Arabia and Africa, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Suez Canal. Suez, Suez Canal. It is a very important canal, okay? So in this area, there, there are uh, yani oil reserve, huge oil reserve. But also in Egypt, you know, we are a poor nation, so we don't have the capacity, uh, the monetary or money uh, needed to drill the, uh, to drill, uh, the well. Because, you know, uh, when you drill a well, it, the likelihood of uh, this well will have a bit rule is it is a small. You can waste hundreds of millions of dollars and you will not extract a single uh, oil uh, be, um, single oil barrel. So we need, we need, a, special, uh, we need a cooperation of uh, foreign uh, companies like uh, British Petroleum. Uh, it is a very large here in Egypt. And also a British Petroleum and any. Uh, and uh, um, Shell, uh, Shell, okay. In uh, 2014, uh, British Petroleum, or uh, or around this time, British Petroleum experienced a crisis in the Gulf of Mexico or something like that. Uh, there was there was a oil drop. Uh, one of British Petroleum tanker or has uh, had an explosion. Uh, yani, uh, this, there was an accident. Accidentally, to oil drop. So the British Petroleum company was find a huge fines as a, as a, uh, other countries find the British petroleum huge fines so they uh, they had to sell their assets in Egypt okay so British petroleum sold uh, its assets in Egypt for a drug and oil company it's called uh, it is an emirate uh, oil company uh, for 500 million dollars this is what happened okay um, this about the يعني, Egyptian oil and the oil um, This is about the Egyptian oil industry. 
But it is very attractive, yeah, attractive, yeah, attractive industry because of high salary, high compensation. It is very attractive. About gas industry in 2015, in 2015, Egypt uh, has discovered uh, the Zohri field. Zohri field, it is the largest natural gas in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it is uh, has it is have a proven uh, has a proven resource of 30 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Okay, so this was a huge discovery. It is worth 100 billion US dollar uh, only to Egypt. And uh, the company that uh, that discovered it was any corporation. Any is an Italian uh, company. So natural gas in Egypt, uh, yes, it is a very good business. It is expanding business. Uh, and a profitable one, okay? Uh, but uh, in Egypt, uh, we do have, yani, uh, in Egypt, um, we do have a contract for exporting the gas to Israel, okay? As you know, Egypt and Israel is not very friendly countries. Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering how that happened. Yes, it is, um, you know, corruption. Uh, we, do, we can have, we do have... Uh, um, a head of states and the head of government we who are corrupt who are corrupt so they export the gas to Israel by in a long term contract for half or third of its uh, of its market price so Egypt is exporting gas to Israel for third of its market price or half to its market price so this was yani a very good yani crisis very very great crisis happened in Egypt uh, that through Hosni Mubarak, uh, Hosni Mubarak rule, that lead to, to that lead to 2011 uh, revolution. You know that in Egypt in 2011 had a revolution. That through yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, this one this was one of the biggest uh, yani, mistakes he made because we don't like them and we yani, we 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 give them our money and our gas in return for nothing. Okay, so this was a very crisis. Uh, also, uh, in the Gulf uh, region, Gulf region uh, is a very, يعني, is a very prosperous region. Prosperous region. The cost of uh, extracting an oil a barrel is around, uh, يعني, ten dollar, uh, twenty dollar. It is very cheap to extract a, a oil barrel in the Gulf countries. But in يعني, UK, UK have uh, the North Sea. In the North Sea, when you try to extract an oil barrel, you will pay about 50 or 40 dollar. In America, 30 dollar. So in the Gulf country, it is very cheap to extract the oil. The oil is very good, high quality, low sulfur. So that would, that would make them rich. Also in uh, 1973, Egypt fought a war. Egypt and Syria fought a war against Israel. In 1973, that uh, led to a global oil blockade. Yes, I remember. I've I've heard about it. Yes. So uh, the oil uh, prices was uh, was tripled in uh, in matter of years. This made the Gulf country very rich. Okay, they uh, they extract the oil for ten dollar and sell them for hundred dollar. So they made a massive profit of that. The golden days of. The Middle East, right? Yes, yes, yes. Most of the of the Gulf nation um, are, يعني, have developed a new strategy to not depend on the oil reserve. They they know that the oil one day will be um, will will end, and they know that the oil prices is not will will fluctuate will fluctuate greatly. It is not a constant price, hundred dollar per barrel. No, in in the previous months, the oil the oil contract uh, have reached a negative uh, US dollar. Yeah, yeah, true. It's very volatile. It's very hard to trust it. Yes, so they do they do want not to and not to be dependent on oil prices. They want to establish an industry. They want to establish a trade. So, uh, so they will not depend on oil prices like Venezuela did. When Venezuela did depend on the oil, it failed. Yes, that's true. Also because of the blockades and the oil industry was dependent on the oil gas. Yes. yes, yes. So United Arab Emirates, UAE, it is a very great nation. I love it. I love it very much. Um, have developed a strategy to offset the oil price, uh, to offset the oil um um, the oil dependence of uh, the oil dependence, uh, and they develop an industry and they become a financial hub. They use the oil money to invest in themselves and to establish an industry. 
but Saudi Arabia used the oil money to buy a cars, buy a mansions, you know, يعني. so they are a big problem now. يعني. Okay, great. So can you let us know more on that? I think it's a very interesting topic because typically we don't talk about all the geopolitics that typically oil and gas has. It's We only talk about the refinery, but it, I think it's very interesting on yeah. how oil is right now in the Middle East because... For example, let us know about the drop in oil. What happened in Egypt when the oil dropped to from the hundreds to the thirty, forty dollar mark? Uh, in two thousand and fourteen, um, you know that uh, we do we had another revolution in two thousand and thirteen. Okay, so the come our country it was not uh, very good. Uh, was wasn't um, in a very good shape in the economic way the foreign our country depends greatly on the foreign investor okay to invest his money but who would invest his money in a nation that have two revolution in three years and they were uh, no securities uh, the security forces um, um, have been weakened okay there, يعني, there was, was a great chaos in Egypt in that period in 2014 in addition the oil prices dropped from $100 to $40 So uh, the oil companies in Egypt stopped um, stopped to employ a new uh, engineers and a new يعني stopped to take a new employers employees and um, um, in 2014 was the last uh, you know in Egypt when we want to when we want to join a job to get a job in an oil company you would have to uh, to you would have to pass an exam okay this exam is um, is made by the ministry of oil uh, and the natural resources uh, the ministry last exam was in 2014 uh, the ministry hadn't um, had any exams since 2014 and also because we get a loan from the IMF IMF you know IMF the international monetary fund Um, Egypt needed a big loan, so they um, have. A, يعني, so they told our government that we we sh- we shall uh, يعني, reduce the number of public sector employees because uh, the salary the salaries of them are very big. Uh, this is what happened. يعني, 2014 was a great chaos in Egypt and the oil prices. Uh, and um, and IMF had uh, told us uh, they won't give us a loan unless we drop the number of uh, the public employee and oil companies are public companies. Mostly of the oil, let's say, works are government dependent, or do you have private companies as well? Actually, um, it is a mix of that of that and that. Um, in uh, my my father. Um, Um, was an employee of uh, a company called Jabco. Jabco, it is an oil, it is 50% British Petroleum and 50% Egypt. Most of our oil companies are like that. Uh, 50% foreign investor and 50% is Egyptian uh, government. Government, okay, I see. I understand now. So it's like a conjunct uh, investment in order to have, and I think also employees are mostly Egyptians or do they also have like, for instance, BP has uh, English people or so. Yes, yes, yes Eng- uh, English people. Okay, uh, I had a summer training a training in uh, BP or in Jabku, يعني, uh, with the previous year. There were British men there and they were speaking English fluently. Uh, yes, it is uh, 50% British and 50% Egyptian. Oh, that's pretty nice to hear. That is very international there. Yes. Mohammed, let's talk about then. What's happening with the oil and the gas? Because right now you said the oil is not going great, but yes. the gas that you found in the solar field yes. is going to be, well, it's already happening. So how do you see this shift towards the gas industry? Let us know more on what's happening. What are the opportunities for young engineers as well as senior engineers? Zohar Field, uh, the, the company that discovered Zohar Field is any. Uh, any it is an Italian company uh, that have an agreement with the Egyptian government. As I said, as I told you, 50% percent of of the company is Egyptian, 50% percent is uh, Italian. Okay, so this company had discovered uh, the Zohri field. Zohri field is have a large resor- resources of 30 trillion uh, 30 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, and it is the largest uh, oil. Uh, it is largest natural gas reserve in the Mediterranean. The second is uh, Israel one, Israel one, 
uh, ha- uh, it is, has an 18 trillion cubic foot of natural energy. Uh, so Zohar Field, um, it is count- currently uh, pro- production, its current production is about 2 billion cubic feet per day. Uh, our current consumption of natural gas is 6 billion cubic feet per day. And our current and our overall uh, production is about seven billion cubic feet per day. So we actually uh, have a uh, surplus. In the previous years, we we had a deficit. Okay, so now you can sell a lot, right? Yes, and then um, the our the foreign investor has invested in Egypt. They made the, a factory. It is to liqui- liquefy liquefy natural gas factory. So the the natural the raw natural gas will go to this factory and will become liquidated in a liquid state, and they will export them to Europe. So mostly the clients that you have for that gas station or let's say for that gas field is it Europe mostly? Yes, yes. It is very it is very profitable business, yeah. Uh, and also in Egypt we do have a campaign that you يعني, you convert your own car. Uh, instead of run it, instead of it run by petrol, it will be run by natural gas. This will save you about fifty percent of the fuel cost per month. It is a very good thing. Right. Right? No, that's great. Uh, about the gas, yani in Egypt, the gas sector in Egypt is a very good uh, sector. Uh, it is the superior to the petroleum sector. The employees there uh, get uh, higher salary, higher compensation. And also have a multinational, very, very great multinational company operate here in Egypt. Yeah. But um, it is the, the question we do have, we always have an Egyptian. If you are employed in a multinational company, in the, the problem of that, they, they will give you a very high salary, very high compensation, very good uh, work-life balance. But the, the second day, they can uh, uh, say to you, you are fired. But that's the big problem here in Egypt. Like a lot of rotation, even for professionals. Yes, for professional. In 2014, BP fired the hundreds of engineers, of Egyptian engineers, because the oil dropped. So, yani, in Egypt, you are afraid of that. We are, yani, we, we was a socialized, social, socialism country, okay, socialized country, relating to the Soviet Union, okay. So our culture uh, says says that you you will get a job and you will stay in this job. There is, uh, يعني, you, you will not be fired. يعني, our culture is like the Soviet culture or like the other um, socialized, social, social nation, socialized nation. Okay? But this, this has changed a great deal uh, after we become a um, capitalist country. After the revolutions. Yes, yes. Many revolutions on the Soviets and their economic policies or, and, this and, and their economic and their physical policies. Yes. So, Mohammed, do you want to let us know more on that or shall we now talk about more on your actual project? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, last, one last thing is that uh, the, the problem, as I told you, in the multinational companies that uh, have high salary, but you can, they can fire you anywhere. But in the Egyptian companies, uh, they, can, they cannot fire you, okay? Uh, because you are a worker of the government, not the worker of this company. If you, if you kick your uh, manager nose or face, you will get a three days off. This is the maximum you can get, yeah. Um, and also, um, in the Egyptian company, um, you will uh, have your salary in the Egyptian bound, 5,000, 6,000 Egyptian bound. That's like uh, $400 per month. But in the multinational, you will have 1,000 or 2,000 dollar per month, not, uh, Egyptian, not Egyptian money. Yeah. So uh, international market. Eh? What? The international market value of an engineer, you mean? You get yes. paid way more. Yes, yes, pay more. So British Petroleum pays their engineer way more. It is the international market. But Egyptian companies don't pay that much. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's sad. That happens as well here in Mexico. You have the... So the dream is, of course, jump from the actual, let's say, local engineering rates to the international engineering rates. Yes. But I think in Mexico, I think in Mexico have a very great natural resources. Yeah, we have... You do have resources more than the U.S., you know that? More or less, yeah. I've heard about it because the U.S., I think it finished most of their, let's say, standard oil resources. But yeah. Mexico has a problem of 
both drilling, exploration, and production and refinery. Yes, that's, that's need a huge full investment of billions and billions of dollars, you know? Exactly. So that's that. And as you said, in Egypt, we have the same problem here that we have a not so great quality on the uh, crude oil. So we have yeah. high sulfur content. So you need to refine it. And it's kind of expensive compared, of course, if you, let's say, a very nice oil, such as in the Middle East or so. Yes, in the So Gulf. that's the problem. You need a lot of investment and... Yeah, I just said corruption. Corruption here is also a, an issue. Yes, you are just like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you, bro. Yes, yes. Okay, so Mohammed, let's go. Uh, I, I I wanted to talk about this geopolitics so other students, or let's say even engineers in the audience, get to know more on how the oil industry or countries that depend a lot on the oil industry It's like that. You see the oil goes up and industry drives okay. and the oil prices go down and then you have a chaos. So this is very important, especially uh, because if you say this to the U.S., they don't understand quite well what does this mean for the country, how drastically a country can change depending on a industry. Yes, there is a term But, called the resource crisis, uh, cares, resource cares. Okay, exactly. you know most most of uh, the the countries have natural resources is a poor is a poor countries. I don't know, it is a very awkward relation. You know, uh, take uh, Libya Libya our neighbor as an example. Take us as an example. Okay, we do have uh, a huge natural gas reserve, huge petroleum reserve, a good um, a good renewable energy uh, res renewable energy opportunities. And Libya, also our neighbor, Libya, our neighbor have uh, the, the third or the fourth oil um, oil reserve in the world, in the whole world, and Venezuela also. Uh, so we do have, most of their country are troubled country and are poor countries. Because of the same, it's easy cash. Yes, because it depends only on the oil, okay? Yani, but, yani, but when the oil prices are dropped, they, they will have a, a great crisis. Look at Norway. Norway, for example, it, uh, one of the very wealthiest nations. nations. Uh, it has a trillion dollar pension fund. This pension fund takes the revenue from the oil um, from the oil operation and reinvest it in the country, reinvest in other countries. You know, they, they use the oil money very well. Yes, yes, not like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, they, um, they wasted their money uh, by buying a weapon, $200 billion dollar of weapon. I don't know why, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah I, I understand. It's very important for a country to actually invest in the country itself. And that's another issue for another episode, Mohammed. but it's very interesting. Yes, the oil is within and mansions and cars and, and, and. But when the oil drops, they uh, uh, they had a budget deficit in the first time of their history. Yeah, finally. Uh, even though they still have a very large reserve, and I'm sure they're yeah. not scared for the t coming 20 years, but still, it's oil is something something very relative and volatile. So it's very interesting industry because actually that's the industry that moves all other industries. So yes. it's kind of an interesting industry. And I see the renewable industry, it is it, yeah, it's still a poor industry. You know, renewable energy, yeah, it is have a 3% or 5% of the world energy use. You know, it is not very reliable energy. Yeah, the sun energy, it is, what is that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's small, it's almost nothing. It's very baby steps. Yes. Okay, Mohammed, let's talk now about your... I don't know if it's a project or final course, but let us know more on what are you doing on HISIS. Um, in my chemical engineering program, we study HISIS, okay? Um, you know that uh, coronavirus uh, implementation on our, in, the all, in our uh, countries and the old countries, that uh, university shut down and they continue the... Um, And they continue their education online, okay? Not campus. It is online education now. So they have told us that we we will not have an exams. We shall um, we shall have a report or a project. You you would make this you would make this project and you would submit it online. If you succeed, you will pass the current year, okay? So in Egypt, we um, in this uh, school year, we deleted the exams from our notes from our minds. Okay, no exams in this year. 
So uh, my uh, teacher, my uh, doctor, doctor or teacher, uh, had uh, requested from us to make uh, a hysis case. Two hysis case. The first hysis case is that we should, yani, uh, sweet. Uh, we have a natural gas. We need uh, the natural gas to be sweetened. Sweetened, uh, our sweetening of natural gas. Okay. Uh, sweetening of natural gas means that you will remove uh, the natural gas. Uh, sulfur and water and H2S and other um, and other يعني, impu- impurities in the natural gas. We use a sweetening agent called amine. Amine is a very popular sweetening agent. Uh, sweetening uh, sweetening um, there are physical agent and chemical agent, but one of the very uh, popular is amine, mostly used in uh, the oil companies. Uh, because it have a low cost and and have a great performance. Yeah, that's the most commonly used. It's a great process, as you stated. It's one of the cheapest ways to remove sulfide contents. Yes, yes, it is called di- di- diamine. Diamine. Um, so I downloaded Hisis. Yani Hisis, uh, Aspen Hisis. Uh, when you use this, when you use this pro- program. Uh, you have to pay fifty thousand dollar, and you have to be uh, in the university lab to use uh, this program. Yeah. So we do have a special version of Hisis. We modify it to work on our laptop. Yeah. That's uh, just only. Yeah. So we um, in this Hisis case, in our in my Hisis case, in the sweetening case, uh, natural gas or sour gas. We call it sour gas. Okay, sour gas will enter the absorber. To be absorbed against uh, diamine, and will and the sweet gas uh, will uh, emerge from the absorber. But we do have a problem that that amine amine will take the the impurities and will go out in the absorber and will emerge in the absorber. We need to recycle this amine. We want this amine. We want to throw it away. It is, it will be a great cost if we throw the amine away. So we, we will take this rich amine and we will recycle it. We will uh, spread this uh, rich amine. We will spread the amine from the impurities, and we will reuse the amine. Okay, so we we have this rich amine. This rich amine will we will enter it and the distillation, and we will distill it. You know, uh, it is very uh, many operation يعني, in this field. Yeah. Now keep going. I'm I'm interested. I'm actually having here the diagram. I'm following along. Yes. Okay. Um. Can I show you the Hisis case? I do have it inside of front of me. Yeah, yes. All this will be pure audio, but you can explain us what do you see, what type of blocks you're using, how do you connect the streams. That will be great. So we have an absorber. The absorber, sour gas will enter the absorber as a feed, okay? And the amine will enter the absorber as a feed also. So the sweet gas will emerge from the absorber. And the uh, rich diamine will emerge uh, as a second product. This rich diamine, I I will not throw it away because it has a it is it has a value. I need it to yes. recycle. I need to recycle it to it. So rich diamine will go to a valve. The valve will increase its pressure because uh, it emerged from the absorber at low pressure. After that, uh, the high pressurized amine, a rich amine, will go to separator. Separator. We will uh, extract vent gases. You know, the amine will release a vent gas, so we will extract it in a separator. The vent gas typically is carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide or something else? Um, vent gas is mainly uh, CO2 uh, and, also, uh, and also methane. Vent okay. gas, also methane. Uh, also, rich amine will go to a heat exchanger, okay? I will talk about this exchanger in a later because I want to explain the whole thing. Uh, rich amine uh, will go to the distillation tower. Distillation will uh, will separate the impurities. Impurities, we will say it, it is called acid gases. Acid gases term is used to refer to impurities in the amine. What are the impurities? Sorry, Mohammed. What are the, the common impurities? Uh, the common impurities is CO2 and H2S. And some okay. and some of ethane and the H2O uh, water it have a very large water content. Okay, okay. This is called an acid gas. The distillation will uh, will uh, يعني, will extract it and will extract also the lean amine. Lean amine is the clean amine uh, that we will use. Yeah, use that we will reuse. 
the lean amine will exchange will go to heat exchanger to exchange its heat against rich amine it is rich amine okay and then lean amine will go to uh, a pump pump will increase its pressure its pressure also and then we uh, will be recycled to the absorber okay uh, i'm sorry i made a mistake that the first term uh, the valve the valve reduce the pressure not increase the pressure sorry okay 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 uh, this is about my project uh, on natural gas switch do you want to, to hear the dehydration project yes but i just have a doubt let's say the you were in charge of getting all the let's say feed and the unit conditions or what was exactly your task uh, my task my task my task was uh, to make this to make this uh, high case uh, يعني, I, I searched uh, the internet okay I tried uh, many different reference I even uh, sent to a doctor in a Norway it is uh, it is called, it is a doctor who had published a research paper I sent it to him an email that I asked him to send me his highest case in order to know uh, parameters that I didn't know. Him. And okay. also I asked, I sent uh, to another doctor, a doctor or uh, professor, professor yeah, doctor, doctor in Egypt means professor in English, okay? To another mm -hmm. professor uh, in the Alexandra University. And I asked him to ask to send me the, his highest case also, yeah. And I saw a lot of YouTube videos and uh, a lot of reference Uh, helped me a lot yeah great that's nice to hear that you're actually working on something more like like a chemical design which i think you were wondering right uh, you want to do something you have been learning a lot of unit operations about th yeah. thermodynamics mass transfer and so on and now yeah. it's time to actually design processes about that in our universities uh yeah, when in most egyptian university uh our, my friend is also all um complain my friend is complain that we we spend the first year and second year and third year we didn't yeah, what will i get when i learn heat transfer or thermodynamic or fluid You know, in the fourth year, you will actually يعني, use this whole subject to make a project. You know, this is a very good, uh, this is a very good feeling that you have this whole subject you had learned in the three years, in the previous three years, and you understand them and you use it to make one uh, final product. This was a very good feeling, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I think it's very important to have a final project like this. Now, talking about the other process, the TEG or triethylene glycol dehydration unit, can you let yeah. us know about the process overall and how, which blocks do you use? Yes, okay. Uh, in my TEG glycerol project, uh, I used a natural gas, natural gas. Uh, that uh, first, it went to a separator, okay? Separator uh, had separated the natural gas from the water. My main problem is to separate the natural gas from the water using TE glycerol. This is the, my main problem. Uh, but uh, TEG, we use TEG, TEG glycerol because it, it has high quality, it is low cost also and high performance to remove the water. You know, the natural gas will become a dry gas at 99%. This is a very good performance of the TE glycerol. The separator want to give us this performance, okay? But we use separator, uh, يعني, to as an initial step prior to make the TEG glycerol, okay? So first thing, we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll wet natural gas will go to the separator and uh, two-step separator and the water will be out, okay? Second step, the, the wet gas will go to absorber to be absorbed against TEG glycerol. So the dry gas will be out and the rich gas, rich TE glycerol will be out. As the same problem, a rich TE glycerol is the TEG glycerol plus impurities, or it's mainly a water, TEG glycerol plus a water. So I needed to recycle, I need to recycle it because I need to use it again. I want to throw it away. So then we will have to recycle the TEG glycerol, okay? Uh, TEG glycerol will go to the valve, valve will reduce its pressure. And then, and then we'll go to the uh, a separator to remove the venting, uh, the flash gases or the uh, venting gases. Okay. Also, uh, it will go to the distillation column. A distillation column. It will go to the distillation column. Distillation column. Uh, the rich TG glycerol will go to the distillation column, uh, and uh, 
and there will be a, a clean or lean lean TEG crystal will emerge and acid gases will emerge. Acid gas it is the impurities or the water will will emerges and the rich TEG crystal will be recycled back to the absorber. Okay, the recycle process uh, we we use the um, TEG crystal will go will go first to a heat exchanger in order. Uh, TG crystal will go first to a heat exchanger, okay, in order to decrease its temperature. Then uh, it will um, we will add a, a makeup of TE glycerol because um, in distillation column, you know, in distillation column, when you uh, when you try to recycle the TEG glycerol, there some gas will emerge. We, you will have a loss in the qual quantity of TEG TE glycerol. So we have to make up this quantity loses by uh, by adding addition to EG grease roll. Then we will uh, we will have a pump that will increase the pressure, and we will have a cooler to decrease its temperature again after the makeup, and it will be recycled back to the absorber. Which one you had harder time to model the amine unit or the TEG yes, unit? Yes, this one dehydration. It was very hard. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think it has. A little bit more complexity. The amine is actually pretty straightforward. It's two main units, and in one you recover, and in the other you regener yeah. regenerate. Yes. And TG is a little bit more way complex than that. Yes, I used the thirty unit operation to make this process. Okay, that's great. So it will be awesome to have a look at that. Maybe you can send me a print screen on how you find you finish your yes. TG unit. Sure. Okay. Thank you for sharing this, Mohamed. And I think, I don't know if you want to add something else or shall we pass to the quick questions? Okay, you can, you shall pass the quick question. Great, great. So what would you add to your bachelor syllabus? So you, some courses that you think are lacking right now. You know, I need another course in natural gas. I, I studied, I do, I did have a course in natural gas, but I needed another course. You know, that dehydration and the sweetening, this operation, a dehydration, we had only a literature about, the, one literature about dehydration and one literature about sweetening. But this operation is a very an important operation. Um, when I, uh, when anyone wants to be employed in the oil sector and the natural gas sector, he need to have a deep understanding of it. Okay, not just a quick glimpse of what does it uh, does it. And also the petroleum, uh, petroleum um, lessons or petroleum course. It it was one petroleum course. Also, I need uh, yani, uh, courses like drilling. I know I need to know how to drill. Uh, I need the courses economics. Yes, economics. I see. I see mostly our engineers curriculum uh, do have one economic course. I think economics is a great uh, subject to be to study alongside engineering. That's true. That's true. One of my professors had told us that, you know, you know the problem, um, the problem يعني, of oil and the oil resource will be depleted. You can just have you you just have to give everybody an electrical car, so you you resolve the the petroleum uh, problem, but at what cost? You know it is yes. yes at what cost? I get you. I get you. That's true. Making numbers fit the technologies and engineering. Yes. So economics is a very good field, and yeah, every every engineering student must have a deep understanding of it. Macro and microeconomics and the stock market. And the petroleum contract is, you know, very important. Another question. What would you study other than chemical engineering? If you can go back in time. What would you select other thing that is not chemical engineering? Um, my hope, uh, my hopes or my dream was to admit uh, to the faculty of, uh, in, of um, economics and the political science. Okay. It is a very great faculty here in Egypt uh, because uh, I want to yeah, to be an economist. Okay, economist. Uh, it is a very great uh, career. We in Egypt we do have a large banks here like HSBC and the Credit Agricole. Uh, you know this is a good field, and we do have the World Bank uh, head, um, Africa Africa headquarters here, and we do have a City Bank. You know this was a very great career. Yeah, an economist economic career. Also, but also, um, 
از ماني اذرز اللي هو الفايتر بايلوت يو نو افتر سكند سكول يس يس افتر سكند سكول يو شال ادميت يور بيبر تو ذا ارمي اند يو كان بيكم ا فايتر بايلوت بس از فيري فيري هارد تو بيكم ا فايتر بايلوت اي كان ايماجين ذات سو اوكي ثانك يو ليتس باس تو ذيس كويستشن هو دو يو ثينك كيميكال انجينيرنج از فور I think chemical engineering is uh, for hard studying uh, student uh, because uh, you have to uh, you have to deeply understand your courses you have to understand the calculus you have to understand the fluid mechanics and uh, mass transfer and heat transfer and flu- and uh, momentum transfer you have to understand all this in order to uh, understand uh, your final project and you make final project You also have to understand the organic chemistry. You have to understand the nomenclature of the organic components, like CH3, COH. Uh, you have to understand the, uh, many things in order to um, to finish your final project so you can graduate. Also, uh, you don't, uh, you should not um, study. In the last day before exams, one of my professor had told me that if uh, every student studied in the last day of the exam, so they should uh, in the last day before exams, they they can make the engineering um, faculty one year, not five years. So five years is for cumulative, uh, cumulative, the, uh, cumulative learning. You know, the courses need uh, if you if you try to study fluid mechanics in uh, in three or four days. Okay, you maybe will pass. You maybe will pass, but you will not remember anything after the exam. You hadn't uh, you hadn't studied uh, deeply. You hadn't know the Bernoulli equation. You hadn't, uh, يعني, thought about what, what will that help me. So you have to study first, um, first by first. Okay, and you have to attend your the lecture. Uh, يعني, you have to listen to your professor when they are explaining the subject. You you will not understand it your, uh, by yourself. And it is hard to be understood online also. Yeah. The online learning, uh, it is hard. It is not like the campus learning. In the campus learning, the professor are front of you. You can uh, talk to him. You can ask him a question. But when you when you have a YouTube video, you will sleep in front of him. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thank you, Mohamed. Now, this is the last question, but it's interesting one. What is the best advice and what is the worst advice you were given? Um, the best advice I were given um, is um, it okay? It is a life advice, not uh, يعني, not a university advice. Okay, is to concentrate uh, on my on myself. I shall not يعني, I shall not look at others. Um, I shall not look at others successful or poor. Um, يعني, if I see one one يعني, one of my stu- one of my friends or one of my family is a successful one, so I يعني, I shall not be jealous of him. I shall not be يعني, wishing him a bad thing. Okay, I shall wish him a good thing. Okay. Um, and uh, and as if and everyone, <laughs> sorry, I'm memorizing the word. And everyone in in my class or in my family would have a great job, would have a great car or home or money. This will not reduce my future potential. This will not reduce my uh, my my money, uh, my money or my car. Okay. So I will wish good to all other. I am not in any competition with anyone. Okay. This is the the most great advice I was given. And also to concentrate uh, on the um, uh, on uh, يعني, I am a Muslim, so we pray, uh, so we pray, so we fast, so plagiarism and uh, bl- and uh, plagiarism to Mecca. It's called the Hajj. Okay, so concentrate on uh, on my religion also, um, and I will not, uh, يعني, and I will not be jealous or uh, be a bad to anyone. Yeah. Thank you, Mohamed. Well, I don't know if you want to add something else to the episode, or shall we make a conclusion? Yes, uh, the most bad advice I was given by my friends is, is you have to marry. Uh, you you should be married um, at late age. Okay, this is the most bad advice anyone can give you. I think you sh- you should marry um, when you graduate, uh, because when you have a wife, when you have a kids, you will be. I mean, You will concentrate more on your job and your life. 
but uh, before marriage uh, it is uh, it is not that very good life man, in my opinion man okay no that's always personal i think it depends a lot on the country and what do you want to do with your goals but i i i also think having family can be very gratifying Okay, so Mohamed, we are coming to the end of the show. Do you want to say something or make a conclusion of the episode? Yes, as a conclusion, uh, if anyone thinking of becoming a chemical engineer, um, it is, I think it's a case-by-case -case, um, uh, decision. You should look at your country. If your country have an oil production and the natural gas production uh, and uh, environmental, a good environmental regulation, and a very good perspective of chemical engineers, then you shall admit, okay. But if your country don't have an oil or uh, natural gas business, I think it is it will not be appropriate for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, definitely check whether or not chemical engineering is a good fit. I think yes. overall it's a good fit, but of course there are some countries or regions or even cities that might be convenient or not. So if you're not willing to relocate, to move from cities or countries... Yes then always check whether or not you want to actually like study chemistry. In the U.S., like it is Texas, it's the state of Texas that have very uh, يعني, petrochemical industries. Not any states, it's only Texas, you know? يعني, yeah, so if you are in, uh, in uh, a state that don't have uh, petrochemical industries, it will be very hard to come to have a job. Yeah. That's true. Well, Thank you, Mohamed, for joining me in this episode. I'm really happy that you made the time. And you I are, really man. love the, the chat about health politics and oil and gas in the Middle East and how Egypt is, well, getting luck with that sore field out there. Yes. I hope you, you engineers out there get better uh, rates, better pays, and Thank you get you. a better quality of life. Yes, okay. I hope you too. Thank you. So, guys, this was it. Thank you for joining us, and we will see each other in the following episodes. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And before you go, I will really appreciate it if you take the time to share this podcast with your fellow colleagues, classmates, friends, or really anyone that might be interested on the topic of chemical engineering and its related fields. If you found this content helpful and valuable, please consider subscribing, writing, and leaving a review. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot.